In this Flash tutorial, we're going to look at working with ActionScript 3. For this tutorial, we're going to pretty much take our mouse cursor and replace it with a movie clip of a baseball bat. And we're going to have it that when the player clicks the mouse, the cursor symbol will change. So it'll look like the bat's swinging. So you could then extend upon this tutorial later on if you wish, and you could add in a ball for the bat to hit, or bugs or enemies that the bat could smash or squash, whatever it may be. So to get started, we'll just quickly look at what's already been created. On your first scene, you'll notice that there's actually nothing there. In the library, we have our movie clip symbol. It's just simply a baseball bat. If I double click and go inside the bat, you'll notice that there are two separate frames. On the first frame, the bat is at a downward angle. And on the second frame, the bat is horizontal. So if I scrub head that, it looks like the bat is swinging. And on the second layer, I have my action script, which is simply a stop function so that way that animation won't play until I tell it to. So that there is all inside the bat symbol. If I go back out to scene one, you'll notice that the bat isn't actually on the scene or on the stage. That's because we're actually going to use action script to drag the bat from the library onto the stage for us. Now to do that, I need to make one change to my movie clip. I need to do what we call export it or link it. So what I'm gonna do is go over to my library and right click on the bat, go down to properties, click on advanced, and then tick the box that says export for action script. Now you'll see it's given a class name which is also bat, and I'm going to leave that. And what this pretty much will allow me to do is talk to this in, in the action script and then communicate with Flash to say drag that out of the library for me and put it on the stage. When I hit OK, a little warning comes up just saying this does not exist. Don't worry about that and press OK again. Then if you check in your library, you'll notice under linkage it says export bat. That's how we know that it's working. So you should have your movie clip created. Inside of it, you should have your basic animation, a stop function, and then you should also have your movie clip exported for action script. Once you have all that, we're ready to start actually designing and coding what we want to happen in this little mini game that we're going to create. So to start with, I'm going to open up my actions. So I'm going to click on frame one and F9 is your shortcut or you go down to window actions. Now inside there, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a variable. Now we'll do each line of code and then we'll explain them as we go. So to start with, what we're going to do is we're going to set up a variable. And if you don't remember, a variable is a container which stores data. So I'm typing VAR to start off my variable and then going to type in bat to represent the baseball bat that we are using and I'm going to do a colon and start typing in the word movie clip. My code hinting will come up and as movie clip highlights I'm going to hit enter and put a semicolon in to end the statement. Movie clip should turn blue which represents it as a keyword in action script and all I've done here is said I'm going to have a variable, a container that's going to pretty much declare that the baseball bat is of movie clip properties. Because the baseball bat isn't on the stage and it's something that we're telling Flash to grab and put there for us, we need to tell Flash what type of thing it is. So in this case, it's a movie clip, so Flash will know all the properties that are involved with it. Okay, once I've done that, I'm going to start my first function. And my first function is going to hide the default mouse cursor. So it's going to get rid of that default mouse cursor we usually see. It's going to add an instance of the new cursor at the mouse position. So in other words, it's going to take the baseball bat and put it at the position that the mouse would be. And it's going to set the symbol's mouse enabled property to false, which is also going to help us keep the mouse hidden and have the baseball bat represent us in the mouse position instead. So we'll type that up and then we'll go over it again. So to start with, I'm going to call this initialize bat, open close brackets and statement. I'm going to enter twice and I'm going to start my function. So function initialize bat and for functions you guys should be pretty familiar with those by now so you should understand what we're doing at the moment. Open close brackets colon start typing void enter open curly brace enter close curly brace up enter. Okay so the first thing we're going to type into my function is I'm going to type in mouse dot hidden, sorry dot hide. 
and what that's going to do it's going to remove the mouse cursor that we would generally see so I need to hide that to ensure that I can put a movie clip symbol in its place next I'm going to type in bat space equals space new bat this time for capital T open close brackets and statement so I'm saying bat which is the variable that I set up here which is my movie clip variable is going to equal a new instance of capital B bat in other words the bat that's in our library enter I'm then going to say bat.x equals mouse x and statement and that should be a lowercase m sorry and then I'm going to put in bat.y space equals space mouse y and statement so this here is now saying that the new bat that's been created is going to be at the position the x and y position of my mouse cursor so the horizontal and vertical enter down once more bat dot mouse enabled space equals space false and then end statement and the final one is add child open brackets bat close brackets end statement so that is actually taking the bat from the library and placing it onto the stage for me so you know, I also just realized that I spelt false wrong so let's add an E in there and false will turn blue for me so it is a keyword as well okay so if we were to actually test this now what should happen and hopefully it will is that when we hit control enter wherever my mouse is positioned that is where the bat will appear on the actual stage so I'm going to you'll notice the mouse is just here, I'm going to hit control enter and that's where the bat appears now when I move my mouse, which I'm doing, nothing actually happens you can't see the cursor because we've hidden it but the bat isn't going to follow the mouse yet because we haven't told it to so I'm going to close that, I'm going to enter down from my function and what we're going to set up now is, we're going to set up an event listener which will update the position of the mouse so that way the movie clip will follow it no matter where the mouse moves now you guys should also be fairly familiar with event listeners so we're going to do one for the stage so stage dot add event listener open brackets what are we listening for we are listening for mouse events so mouse events capital M capital E period full stop and we're listening for a mouse underscore move I'm gonna put a comma in there and I'm gonna call it bat move close brackets and statement so I'm setting up an, a listener, an event listener, that's listening to my whole stage and it's listening for mouse movement and we're going to say we're going to listen for where the actual mouse is moving so once again I'm going to write a function so function bat move open brackets <coughs> excuse me, what is it? it's an event colon mouse events close brackets colon void open curly brace, close curly brace and then we're going to type in our actual code to make sure the movie clip follows the mouse so that will be bat.x space equals space this dot mouse x end statement and then bat.y space equals space this dot mouse y end statement so these two lines of code are simply saying my baseball bat is going to follow the x-axis and the y-axis of my mouse on the stage so once again I'm going to hit control enter to test that and make sure it works so now when I hit control enter you'll see that the bat appeared where the mouse was but now when I move my mouse my bat will follow all across the stage with it so the next thing I want is that when I click I want that bat to move that animation to run so it looks like it's actually hitting forward so what I need to do now is, is add in two more event listeners so before I type them just think about what you have to do here so we need to add in two event listeners one that will be listening for the mouse to click so the mouse going down and one listening for the mouse to come up which will make the bat go down and up down and up and then I'm obviously going to do two functions for that so instead of typing these out from scratch I'm just going to copy and paste some of the code we have and make the small changes now if you're still a little bit confused about event listeners and functions make sure you pay close attention so you make the changes you need to but for those of you that have been following on in class and doing this a bit you should be able to do this fairly easily so I'm going to copy my event listener and I'm going to paste in two of them because I'm going to need two event listeners now I'm still having stage event listeners they're still mouse events the only thing that's changing 
is it's no longer a mouse move and I need to change the name. So what I want is, I want a mouse up and a mouse down. So in other words, when the mouse button is down and when the mouse button is up, something will happen. So I'm going to call this one bat up and this one bat down. I'm then just going to copy and paste the function that's already here. And obviously I need to change the name, so function bat up. It's still an event, it's still a mouse event, and all I need to do is change the code in the middle. So the code that I'm going to put in here is going to put in bat dot go to and stop open brackets frame number one close brackets and statement. I'm going to copy and paste this entire function change bat up to bat down and bat dot go to a stop is going to become frame two. So what I've done here is two event listeners one is listening for the mouse button to be released to be up one is listening for the mouse button to be down. When the button is up, the function is going to play. Remember our movie clip when we go inside of it, there's two frames. When the button is up, it's going to play frame one, which is this original bat being at the downward angle. And when I release it, the bat is going to then look differently. It's going to look like it's swinging. So the second frame is going to play. So when the button's pressed down, the second frame will play and it will look like when you're clicking, up down up down that the bat is swinging and then all we did here was simply copy and paste the code and make two two or three small changes that were needed so if you got a bit lost there just rewind the video go back and look at the words that you need to change and then you'll have the exact right code that you need so now when I test this this will be our final test I hit control enter we know that the mouse is already working in terms of moving and following us and now when I click when I press down, frame 2 is played, which is the straight bat, and when I let go, so it's mouse up, it goes back to frame 1. So as I click, we get the illusion of the bat being hit somewhat. Now what you could do is add in a ball or add in enemies or something like that, that you could then have contact the bat, or the bat could hit them in certain directions. So this tutorial has simply looked at removing the mouse cursor, using a movie clip to follow in place of the mouse cursor, and then having something happen as we click down and release the click.